Um, this is a poster that uh, is going upstairs, but I just thought I'd wave it about to help me, because the same day that uh, Lindsay emailed and asked if I would come and speak the challenges, the experience, and all about a Tunbridge Passion Play, same day I had an email from our Jesus, phone urgently, he's pulled out. <laughs> Now, what that is, is A, it's given me a huge challenge because we've got everything else in place for this Good Friday. And we're going on to Rochester Prison, which is very exciting. I've been there five times and worshipped with the prisoners. So huge numbers of people want this to happen. But what it reminds us is Christ is the cornerstone. I can put in other people who say, really want to be involved, Helen, can't take on the role of Jesus, really want to help, but can't do this. Jesus is central, isn't he, to our lives, to the passion play. So that is our biggest challenge right now. But in terms of experience last year, this is to encourage everybody. I'd been to the passion play conference, I think, was it, was your first one three years ago? Uh, two years ago. Yeah. And Peter Blackman, where are you, Peter? He's going to speak. Um, as I sat at the table and different people were speaking, and somebody mentioned a budget of 100,000, at which point I turned to Peter and said, I think this is where I leave. <laughs> uh, there's no way we're going to get any budget of any remotely that size. And Peter said, oh, no, no, you can do it for less than that. Uh, so he came down to Tunbridge on a visit and we looked at, we've got a castle and a huge lawn and bits of ruin around. So we had the setting. Every one of us on the Passion Play team was without any experience at all. I've directed plays as an English teacher, that kind of thing, but nobody had done it outside. We were on council property. We couldn't just <coughs> dig a cross in and leave it there. We had to have a cross that we could transport, that we could put up in a church to practice or whatever else. So we had all kinds of challenges. Funding-wise, the ministers across the town really wanted this to happen, but were not into drama. So I struggled to get 9,000 out of them for everything. And of course, the huge expense, as you will all know, was the sound. Our sound man had, in fact, planned for 500 people. It had never been done before. It was bitterly cold. We had to suddenly have rehearsals inside that should have been outside. We had local children singing before the start of the play as the audience came in. And, of course, they froze too. So we, I was worried about the whole cast going down with um, pneumonia. <clears throat> but, in fact, 500 people didn't come. It was bitterly cold. Over 2,000 people came, and as we came through the arch of the castle with the donkey, it was awesome seeing how many people in the town, it's in the centre of town, the castle, had gathered to see the greatest story ever told. Because to me, and to all of you here, the Christmas baby, lovely, hordes of people come into church for the baby, don't they? They tend to leave after Christmas. And if the story of the cross isn't true and the resurrection, then it's just another baby. So we had last year total inexperience, very little money, and I was looking for an unemployed young man. Because one of the biggest challenges I found is there are young men in the churches. They tend to be involved already doing youth work, children's work, and I'm told they're too busy. We found an unemployed young man who was absolutely superb. He was so superb that he would be praying before the start of the rehearsal. And when I said at the end, we were having a song, Peace My Friends, that I'd uh, come across in America, and we were going to finish with the song, Peace My Friends, he was going to remove himself and then come back in ordinary gear, because we couldn't have Jesus just wandering around with the crowd afterwards. I didn't think that would work came back as himself and he said the peace of the Lord be always with you and all of us then said the peace of the Lord be always with you 
And when I said to him, I'm sorry, Tom, I'm going to send you out before the end, he said, Helen, it's not about me. It's about him. So we were enormously blessed with our Jesus. And Jesus and many of his disciples have gone off to train, to be teachers. They've gone to college, which is wonderful. <laughs> but we are left without Jesus and disciples. And I'm not sure if I've gone over my time. No? Uh, but what I wanted to share is, as well is that most of the disciples, including Jesus, were between the ages of 18 and 22. And the most poignant moment for me, in fact, was not the cross. I mean, it was, but it wasn't. Because the Garden of Gethsemane, where all the disciples are asleep, and Jesus is standing there saying, Father, I've taught them everything I know. And you're looking at these sleeping disciples who are very young, which makes them all the more vulnerable. This is the future of the church. <laughs> they're asleep, they're about to deny him, run away, betray him. And, and for me, that was a very poignant moment. And one of the ministers said that a poignant moment for him with the priests blocking the way to, to worship when the temple, you know, when the table is thrown over. And, and this is what one, one minister said to me. So that's what I found really challenging. So um, we've had enormous goodwill from across the community. We have many local children involved. We've got obviously a great age range. In fact, the oldest person taking part, I didn't like to ask them their age, but I think they were nearly 90. And the youngest was a baby of just over a year. So uh, wonderful, but I'm not sure that I can offer any good advice, except that we kept praying. We kept praying and we pursued every possible avenue that we could. And I did find it difficult that church people, forgive me, I shouldn't say, oh, this is going to be recorded. Cut this out, okay? <laughs> Cut this bit out. Uh, there were people in the church, quite a number, for instance, who go to the Anglicans, have a three-hour service on Good Friday. We do it Good Friday, Tunbridge Castle, and that morning, and then we're going on to the prison in the afternoon. They came up to me and said, Helen, is this going to interfere with the three-hour service? At which point I wanted to say, I think Jesus said, go, rather than stay where you are. But this time we have the Bishop of Tunbridge leading the three-hour service, and he wants to be in the costume crowd, which is another enormous blessing, really, because it's going to draw more people in, I believe. So I think, you know, fundraising is an issue, but we are doing it across the churches, inviting people from each congregation to contribute. We are not having any sale of any tickets at all. We want this to be a gift to the people of Tunbridge. And obviously all those of us on the Passion Play team, whether it's, you know, you, you give in all sorts of ways, don't you? I mean, we, we buy things ourselves and don't claim for it and all of that. So I think